<laughs> My first guest is one of the most enduring personalities in the music business, sometimes referred to as Jones the Voice. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Jones. <laughs>
We'll be right back. We're going to take a commercial. We'll be right back with Tom Jones. Oh, well, yeah. I thought it wouldn't be complete. I saw the promo you did last last week. So oh, I thought maybe. There you go. Huh? <laughs> wow. See, this is what they call a life mold. It's uh, an accurate depiction of. Sorry. <laughs> I have a trailer that big. Um, you have such rabid fans who follow you everywhere, and it seems to me that I've been watching this phenomena for uh, like over 20 years. What what is it about you that? Seems to keep these people just coming and coming and coming for all these years. Well, they uh, never desert you. Hopefully, my voice. Yeah, but I mean, there's more to it than that. There's like a charisma or something. <laughs> they seem to. Well, it's the way the way I deliver a song. I would think. I hope anyway. I mean, that's uh, that's what I would hope it would be. Yeah, it's you're the... always pumping up. Yeah, I, I try to like... hit everything hard. You know, I mean, even a, a ballad. If I'm doing a ballad, I, I try to get as much emotion into it as as possible. Mm -hmm. And I think it it uh, gets across to the to the people, and that's why they keep coming to see me. Now, is it harder to manufacture that energy after these years, or do you still actually... Uh, it's the only way it? I can do it. It's, it's, yeah. it's a natural thing. Um, Frank Sinatra once told me in the 60s, you know, he said, you're going you're gonna to burn out if you keep pushing that hard. And I said, well, it's the only way I feel comfortable. I wouldn't feel comfortable with anything less. Right. So he said, look, you know, you could, you could blow it. You could... Uh, but thank God, it's uh, still there, so... How, uh, now, you met Elvis early on. There's somebody who did mm -hmm. uh, burn out. You guys grew to be friends, or...? Yeah, I met Elvis in 1965 when I first came over. And um, we were both at Paramount uh, at the same time, so we got the chat. And he, he thought I was black, you know, because he had... Uh, I had, it's not unusual, what's new pussycat and a, and a, and a, a ballad called With These Hands. Mm -hmm. And he had them, you know, it was my first big year, 1965. Yeah. And he said... Uh, he couldn't understand how I sound the way I do coming from uh, Great Britain. Right. He said he sounded the way he did because he was born in the South, you know, and um, uh, brought up listening to a lot of rhythm and blues, so it, it uh, sort of rubbed off on him. So he, he couldn't quite understand how it could rub off on me coming from, right. from Britain, you know. How did it? Well, listening to American music, you know, right. listening to the radio, and uh, that was it. I was influenced, not really realizing it, just sapping it all in, all yeah. this... Uh, Rhythm and blues, and then of course rock and roll in the fifties. Yeah. Now but, he was at Paramount at that time. He must have been in a. That must have. That was kind of a hellish thing for him. He, he never liked those movies. No, he did didn't. He? No, and he was uh, the the day I met him. He was he was in a mock helicopter doing a movie with a, with a little girl, and he was sort of waving over. And I didn't know who the hell he was waving at, you know, because I walked in there and they said, hey. So anyway, he he was walking towards me singing with these hands, mm -hmm. which was a single that I had out, and it, I mean it knocked me sideways, you know, to to have this. Guy that, uh, that Elvis I, knew, yeah. Yeah, you know. Must have he, been a good feeling. Oh, it was tremendous. Now, what's, uh, you, you have such rabid fans. I'm sure you must have some fan horror stories over the last year. What's the most peculiar, uh, oh, God. did there's, somebody ever immerse themselves completely in you? Oh, you know, there's been a lot of it, you know, I mean, um, getting on the stage and grabbing, you know, for... <laughs> 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 to see if the uh, <laughs> yeah, that see, kind of thing. See if the mic's plugged in. <laughs> exactly. But, uh, yeah. That kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> but not all of it's fun like that. You must get some. Uh, yeah. Well, there was one one lady followed me around one time. Um, she, I was doing some one nighters uh, in the south, and I chartered a, a plane for my band and myself, you know, to get to these places. And she would show up at these shows all the time. I, I, how she was getting there, I don't know. And then she. Um, the, the fellow that was p picking the bags up from the hotel one afternoon, uh, she put her bags out of the room she was in and said she was Mrs. Tom Jones and to put the bags on the plane. So he said, you're not on the list. And she said, oh, well, I've just flown in. And she, was, she tried everything. I mean, it was scary. So uh, the police used to hold her over and then because she didn't really do anything, right. uh, they had to let her go. And then she would show up again, but she followed me all over the place. It was. And she had a strange look about her, you know, so that... Was, it, was it Tammy Faye Baker? Uh, no. <laughs> Not that strange. I heard down <laughs> south and strange look. Yeah, just... No, it was... <laughs> but it does get... To, it gets a little, you know, and there was one guy um, when I was touring in the 70s called himself the Red Baron. Yeah. And he was going to blow me up. You know, and I was, do, I was doing... Uh, 
I was doing shows in the round, you know, I was doing stadiums and the, and the stage would be in the round. So there was nowhere really to go. So the police would come in every night and search under the stage to make sure there wasn't a, a bomb there. Uh, you know? Sop with camel. Or yeah, something. You know, isn't that yeah. what the red is? Um, uh, now, what, what's, your, what, what's the real Mrs. Jones think about all this? She's caught in the middle she, of it with you, kind of. But... Yeah, but she, she, um, she likes the way I sing. I mean, she, she really likes what Yeah, but I the do. panties and all well, the weirdness. You know, that, she I knows. guess it must just be water off her back. Yeah, she knows it's, it's, uh, it's what happens in the show. She doesn't, she doesn't like to come and, and, and see me live, though, because, uh, you know, that kind of thing goes on. Yeah. She would rather either watch me on television, like she will tonight, you know. Um, she knows there's a flirtation, but she doesn't necessarily need to be there to see it. Yeah, she doesn't need to be reminded all the time, yeah. but she, she, she knows that I have to do it. It's something that I have to do. I have to sing. It's, it's part of me, so uh, she, she accepts that. Right. You're going to come back and sing uh, It's Not Unusual a little later? Yes. All right. Definitely. Tom Jones, folks. We'll be right back with Tony Katane right after this. Thank you, Tom. Uh, back to sing his first number one single, ladies and gentlemen, Tom Jones! It's not unused, you want to be loved by anyone. It's not unused, you want to have fun with anyone. to cry. Thank you, Tony Catan, Hector Elizondo. Good night, teenagers. Bye-bye.